Hi, I'm David, and I sometimes know things. Um, I have to say that I'm one of the few David Deutsch that you can see speaking conferences. I'm the one who doesn't talk about quantum computation, so I just do very simple PHP development stuff. Um, and today I'm actually talking about JavaScript. And I need a little show of hand. Who here would say they develop a little bit in JavaScript? So you have done some work in jQuery, for example. You have fixed a problem that has come up on some site. Okay. Okay, yeah, well, that's, that's the point. So there's a difference between jQuery, but most people just use jQuery to just fix one thing on the site or just maybe make something a little bit nicer to use for the user in terms of user interface stuff. Anybody here who has gone a little bit deeper into it, so checked out one of the frameworks, maybe build an application in JavaScript? I so. So that's good, and the question is why? Why, why haven't you stopped, uh, looked into JavaScript yet? Because it's been around for quite a while. And um, for me, I've been developing PHP for eight years now, and JavaScript for about two years now. And for the longest time, I didn't get into JavaScript. And I knew that I needed to get into JavaScript. I think everybody kind of knows they need to get into JavaScript, but we don't do that. And so the talk is about JavaScript, but it's actually a little bit more about stopping to worry about JavaScript. Because when I talk to people and I tell them, yeah, I've been doing, I've been working on this thing in, in Angular or in something else, and they will say, yeah, that's nice. I, I've been meaning to get into JavaScript for a while now, too. And everybody's kind of at exactly that state for years and years, and they don't get into it. So hence this one. Um, the reason why we don't get into JavaScript is because every time we look at it, it looks terrible. And you look at the code, you don't understand the word. The two space indents don't really help at all. <laughs> and they kind of slowly get away from that and then not at all, and then it gets just worse and worse and worse. Um, Douglas Crockford called it Lisp in C's clothing. And if you look at it, it, it's kind of true. So I'm not sure whether you know Lisp or C, but it's a bit, little bit like somebody said, well, I know Lisp is kind of the hugely perfect language that everybody should use, but somehow it's not popular at all. And but then C, on the other hand, is quite hard to do and very complicated, but somehow everybody does it and everybody understands it. So, um, you know, back of the napkin computation, why don't we just combine the two? And, um, well, why don't we just put it in every single browser on, <laughs> on the entire world? And now they're also putting it on the server. And, um, well, how should we name it? Well, Java is kind of popular, so. Let's weaken that a little bit so it's JavaScript. And um, that guy was Brandon Icke, guy at Mozilla. And well, back then it was Mozilla, but it was Netscape. Um, and that was pretty much how it went. <laughs> so, um, well, maybe not, this, not exactly Lisp and C's clothing, um, but somewhat in direction. Um, if you go into JavaScript, you notice a couple of things. First one is, Everything is an object. And that's, even in coming from PHP, that's kind of weird, because we at least have strings. But in JavaScript, you can just do double quotes, a string, and use it like an object. So dot for a function, and then do something with it. And that's pretty much true for everything you think. Well, maybe not numbers so much, but then you get a number object, and everybody uses that, and so it's an object again. And even functions are objects. And then you can have prototypes, which is, you take the object, and you change what an object is. So everything is, in, is completely changeable in the system, and a lot of frameworks do that, and so you kind of lose track what's happening. They also use tons of global variables. So you know how nice it is to have just the dollar sign for jQuery? That is because it is a global variable. And if you know anything about good development, then having lots and lots of global variables is not a good idea. <laughs> and, um, in JavaScript, basically everything is kind of global that you don't have in some kind of function. Um, everything is asynchronous too. 
which is a big step up from PHP. And it's actually nice when you get used to it, but when I started out JavaScript developing, I had, I had to make a rule for myself to always assume when I'm looking at a function that everything I could see was happening at the same time. So you, in PHP, for example, you would say, oh, I will loop through this array, get a couple of variables, and then I will assign them somewhere else with a return. That won't happen. It will loop, and while it's looping, it will return something, and that won't be the finished loop. So this is why you, for example, see a lot of the callback functions. And actually, nowadays, they're starting to lighten that up a little bit with um, what is called promises. So it's kind of a structured way of having callbacks, but it's still kind of callbacks. Um, and these, all these things together, they create the biggest problem, which is scope. So I told you about global variables that you have everywhere on the code. And if you have a function and define a variable, then every single function within that function also has that variable. And that makes it pretty hard to follow through on what is actually happening in the code. So you, all the variable declarations that you have, you declare, declare variables var and then the name of the variable. You can also not use var and then it has a different scope. And all these things combined, when you look at JavaScript, lead you to the idea that maybe I shouldn't really look into JavaScript yet and just use that little bit of jQuery. <laughs> Be happy that it maybe pulls something via Ajax or something. But um, I can recommend this book, um, this one here. It's tiny. You can read it in, well, you can read it in a day, but you usually just have it on your desk and every, every time something blows up, you just, what is happening, Douglas? <laughs> so <laughs> that's a good way to, well, that's a good way for me to learn JavaScript. I can really recommend it. Um, what, it. what the book does is only tell you about the things that are kind of weird about JavaScript. So if you're coming from a PHP background, there you go. <laughs> that is, this is also why I won't talk that much more about the actual stuff within JavaScript, because you're all PHP developers. And at some point, you learn PHP. Some of you started in the university, maybe, learning programming and then going to PHP. Um, but really, when did you start learning PHP? Usually, it was when you needed to get something done. And I think the problem why people don't approach JavaScript is because they, really, they could avoid using JavaScript. They could be fine with doing stuff in PHP, a little bit of glue with JavaScript, and that's about it. Um, well, and also all this stuff about JavaScript, you know, it's kind of everywhere, and, but people really don't like it. Um, as a PHP developer, that kind of looks familiar because if you, if you try to impress people with your programming resume, if you start at PHP, they usually will just stop listening to you from then on because it's the worst programming language on the world, basically. There's a lot of self-loathing, basically, <laughs> in, in PHP. Um, so when you look through those things, you, I at least arrive at the point where I say, well, I'm, I might be a long-time developer and I kind of see that JavaScript is terrible, but really who am I to judge? And um, that usually, if you, if you stand in front of the thing and you say, well, kind of, I should change my view on this because you need to kind of change your view to get to it. Um, you kind of step into this existential crisis at some point where you say, well, I now kind of have to rethink everything that I'm doing. Because if you, if you look at asynchronous communication, for example, that doesn't work when you have a server that generates static content because um, that's usually a problem. And um, you go through that and through that and it gets a little bit weird. And um, at some point you arrive at just going through this anxiety phase, and that can have two different outcomes. Um, usually when you look at a new technology, that usually means you have a lot of new choices. But what do you, where do you know whether you've made the right choice? And even if you make that choice, that kind of also means that maybe some choices that you made before weren't true or weren't good. And so, I think the reason why we just stand beside JavaScript and 
from time to time poked with a stick is because we are just so used to doing stuff in PHP. And um, knowledge in that instance creates anxiety. That's the reverse of one of my favorite concepts in the world, which is the Dunning-Kruger effect, which you have usually seen with a lot of people around you, which is that the less they know, the more confident they actually are in what they think they know. And um, by the reverse, the more you actually know all the stuff that you don't know, the less confident you are. And um, so in, in that, you know kind of, I should do JavaScript, and I'm not good at JavaScript. And um, the more you look into it, you just increase the amount of stuff that you know you don't know. And that's usually a problem. Um, so what I'm usually trying to do, and JavaScript is part of that, is to try and consciously reverse that process. So make stuff harder for you. Um, when Raphael was talking about um, forcing yourself to make your code cleaner, for example, I think that's a good way to impede yourself. Because what you want to do is you want to stop working the way you were working before even if that means that you're kind of changing the way you develop in, in general. Um, what I'm, the other thing that I'm also recommending, and this is in addition to what Raffo said, there are actually tools to help you with that. So there's a thing called Scrutinizer, which can look at your code and tell you whether it's too complicated or not. There are static analysis that you can run through it and that tells you, you know the thing that he showed where every if makes it more complicated? Um, you can run a program and that tells you, well, this method is too complicated. And it's a robot telling you you are bad at something and we want to please the robots, basically. And um, that's the way to do that. And getting a little more concrete about getting started with JavaScript, you need a project. You need to actually do something that you want to do in JavaScript. Um, it doesn't have to be good. I, for example, started developing because I was tired of, well, I really like spending too much time on YouTube, but I, li but I dislike the way they present your subscriptions. So I built an application that would show me <coughs> my subscription in a better way. And a couple of people are using it, actually, because it's a public project. But, um, and it wasn't good code. But as the wise dog Jock said, uh, Jake said, sucking at something is the first step at being sort of good at something. And if you don't take the first step, and if that, if that first step doesn't have any, well, you, you need something that doesn't really matter, but you kind of want to finish it. And if, you, if this is why you don't start just making your whole application JavaScript based, because you know that you will break stuff, it won't be as good as what you have before. And so you, you always stand back from that option because it wouldn't work out for you. And you're right, but if you take a project and make it very fun, and, um, well, maybe have something else, look at it, learn together. That helped me a lot. Um, what's the next one? Working again? Cool. <laughs> um, the other thing you can do is use a framework. Um, there are a lot of frameworks out there, but you should use Angular. I can't tell you what to use, basically, because you have to make the decision for yourself, but you should really use Angular. Um, <laughs> when I was looking into JavaScript frameworks, I was obsessing about which framework will I use, because you can really stay away from JavaScript for a long time by not really deciding which framework you want to use. Um, and for me, looking at it for about one or two years, the, really the only difference or the only choice that you have right now is between Angular and Ember. And um, so making that decision basically took a couple of months as well. And finally, I used a very stupid metric to force myself to make a decision. And that's the one. Um, this is the count of contributors for all these frameworks. And um, I think it's a pretty good reason to choose Angular. <laughs> so, I mean, jQuery isn't 
as much a framework as Ember, Backbone, and so forth are. And even Backbone is debatable whether it fits in there. But you have a huge community of people that you can talk to that are producing. I'm rarely, I, I rarely need to build new stuff because, um, well, somebody has done it before. And that's kind of how you also got into Joomla and how you got into developing in Joomla because somebody else did something, you could use it, and from there on you could start to kind of do your own thing through it. And um, yeah, that's what helped me. And really the most important thing that I want to tell you is you should stop worrying. And I can tell you there is no tool to help you stop worrying about whether JavaScript will work for you or something. You just have to stop that <laughs> and <laughs> really start doing it. Um, so there is, there is no silver bullet. And um, finally, this is the, my approach to all new things. I try to stay humble, keep learning, and remain curious about new things. And how long did we take now? I didn't even check before. <laughs> because I'm done now. So that's all. <laughs> There's one question. Are you saying you should get jQuery out of the <laughs> yeah. No, that depends. I'm Angular is also a huge investment. And you can't as I, as I said, you can't just put it into an existing huge code base. Um, also, Angular isn't that much about, um, Angular has its own MVC, basically, which you would then run on top of Joomla's MVC, so it's not really that efficient. Um, I use it in a way where I have a server set up that just puts out JSON data, and all the templating, all that stuff, all the routing, basically, or two, that all happens within the Angular application. So that's the router gone, that's the view gone, that's most of the controller gone, um, you can't really sell that for Joomla. So <laughs> this is why, why jQuery, the narrow focus that jQuery has, um, and Angular actually uses jQuery for a couple of things. Um, that's why I think it actually makes sense for the current code base of Joomla to stick with jQuery. Sounds like kind of what they presented during the Node.js presentation. Probably. Yeah. And you can do that with, um, with PHP too. Um, so I developed a little stack that just puts out for a or a route puts out data for you. And if you have the data there, that's basically it. <laughs> it's not hard to write that in PHP, so. <laughs> if you don't have to do all the controller stuff and view stuff, basically. Any other question? I didn't even expect to, that we, I just expected people to be disappointed that I wouldn't explain more actual JavaScript, but I actually tried to make a point that I can't get you to learn JavaScript. You have to teach yourself, as you probably taught yourself PHP. Then we might be writing bad JavaScript. <laughs> and that's good. That's better than no JavaScript. The first PHP was kind of approved. Yeah, your first. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. Everybody started writing perfect PHP code from day one. And it, you always, you, you're using it now, probably, the first code that you wrote. <laughs> Yeah, um, and you can follow that path down until you again are not doing anything at all, basically. So that that's, I think, for a lot of people, an excuse to not get really started with anything. And whether you do something in jQuery, whether you do something with Angular, or whether you go completely pure and just use basic JavaScript, I mean, the most people use JavaScript, a JavaScript framework, because it does browser abstraction. That's usually the main starting point. If you want to have something run in different browsers, you better use a framework, otherwise you will do browser testing all day long, basically. So that's, and I think, like Joomla, it's a safe haven to start out of, and that's usually a very good thing. Okay. Uh, I have no question, but just one uh, uh, little thing I heard, and I, 
I find uh, funny uh, is uh, Ed Wood's Law. You ever heard of that? No. Ed Wood's Law is if anything can be written in JavaScript, <laughs> right. in the end, it will be written. There's actually there's a very, very good talk that um, I don't remember the name of the guy, but he held a talk basically 20 years into the future where everybody has used ASM.js. AS Does anyone know ASM.js? Yes, it's basically a compiler that, that takes C code and converts it to JavaScript. So you, and people have done that, you could take an X server from Linux and run it within JavaScript. You can take a game that was programmed in C and actually run it in JavaScript. And so his talk was about that in the future we all just do JavaScript basically and um, <laughs> Well, he goes even further than that, but <laughs> you can actually write a lot in JavaScript. In fact, that is also what is done with Node.js, that is JavaScript that is often used on the server. Yeah. Well, Node.js is, is <laughs> yeah. And you can write a scheme. It's quite fast too, especially because you have all the asynchronous stuff. And that's, yeah. that's something that PHP only now gets into kind of with a couple of frameworks that help with that. But it's also, sometimes it's nice to have something synchronous and just have to run it down, not worry about whether your scope is right. So I, ca I kind of like doing both at the same time. And what I'm trying to tell you is it can be enjoyable. So <laughs> you should try it. But you can use basic Firefox tools, developer tools. Um, and the other thing, this is also, for example, why there was, as, as I said, this choice between AngularJS and um, Ember. And AngularJS actually makes a pretty big point out of unit testing in, Ang uh, in, in JavaScript, which you can also do. And um, so that was a big plus for Angular. Ember had a big plus that they have a hamster in the logo, which I also find pretty neat. But I actually gravitated more towards the unit testing. Um, but for just basic testing, just take a browser. Simple as that. Cool. Oh, thanks a lot. <laughs> 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 <laughs>